Assalamu alaikum my brothers and sisters i've been receiving so many emails regarding the suggestions that you have for what i should be speaking about in these insta live sessions and one of the most important things i've been noticing is marital problems problems difficulties people are facing within their homes and uh, they're asking me to address this matter and it's not just men oppressing women or denying them their rights but it's even the women who are uh, sometimes doing wrong against the men in a way that they're complaining one of the most important factors that i've picked up is people who are not intimate with their own spouses where do they expect those spouses to go it's very important to resolve the matter because as much as we wouldn't like things to be imposed on one another we need to be able to let things flow there needs to be a beautiful relationship such that uh, you know the love that is felt between us would lead us ultimately to respecting each other's needs and at the same time one of the purposes of marriage is to be able to provide that comfort the intimacy to the spouse uh, you know the quran speaks about the sakina and the rahma the mercy and the, the the solace that is meant to be achieved so i think it's important for us to address this that when you have a problem between yourselves husband and wife learn to resolve it before the evening learn to solve that matter if you don't solve that matter do you know what would happen by the time the following morning comes up shaitan's already worked on the minds of both parties and we're drifting further and further away until subhanallah before you know it it's actually too far uh, and we may not be able to resolve these matters so my brothers and sisters it's important for us to know when you married why did you marry you are supposed to be ready to help your spouse and please my beloved brothers you know so many people are complaining about how difficult it has become over time when uh, the phones are looked at and we see messages from people who are not supposed to be sending messages to you and this happens to some of the women as well but I think it's a problem that's more with the the males and uh, I may be wrong there but from the amount I'm gauging from the amount of responses I've had from you and this problem is such that if you were to think for a moment how your spouse might have felt when they saw this message coming through uh, from someone who wasn't supposed to be messaging and it has intimacy in it you know whether it's the I love you I miss you and sometimes it's it proves a deeper relationship and sometimes it actually goes beyond that and makes it prove some form of adultery or some form of uh, intimacy that was illicit so to speak immoral outside of wedlock so to speak may the Almighty protect us all May the Almighty protect us all. We need to be more responsible. We need to repent to the Almighty, make things happen. Imagine you have your children, the children of your own. You are supposed to be a role model to these children. And suddenly what you're doing is you're busy having an affair. And your children won't even be able to look at you as a role model. There is going to be a problem between you and your spouse. And this affair is either way it happens sometimes with the wife sometimes with the husband and a lot of the men they they use you know uh, they use and abuse terms uh, in order to try and blackmail their spouses maybe from a religious perspective emotionally etc you know i've come across a line where they say well you know i could have married her anyway but you have not yet married her and you are not her spouse so you cannot justify an illicit relationship with a statement i can marry her if i want or i could have and i couldn't have that is a dirty cheap statement trying to justify a sin that is being committed that is a major major sin so remember this if you're going to be married and you're not faithful to your spouse you deserve to be kicked may allah protect us i'm sorry to have said that but it's a reality if you're not prepared to be faithful and if you're not prepared to seek forgiveness and apologize for what you've done then i don't know how you think it's fair for your spouse to remain with you and to just stomach everything that you're doing the almighty's rod definitely will reach you at some stage remember whether you are a male or a female remember if you are a person who's evil in the sense that you are committing a sin and on top of that blaming your spouse for it some people say well you know it's all your fault how is it your fault don't blame someone else for your sins you don't do that if you have a problem with your spouse sort it out but don't be from among those who 
uh, keep on saying it's your fault you led me to sin how did i lead you to sin subhanallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive these type of statements you know it's like shaitan people can say shaitan you led me to sin etc shaitan on the day of judgment is going to say i'm free i just i just dangled something and you ran for it but in this case it's not even shaitan it's it's your own sin and you're trying to blame your spouse for you having having gone astray so my brothers and sisters this is absolutely important it's a topic that people don't even discuss listen if you're committing a sin and you're blaming your spouse for it i like i said you deserve to be kicked really and May the Almighty grant you guidance and all of us. Uh, another thing I can let you know is if you have children, you have a family, you have responsibility, you cannot have everything you want on earth. Become responsible, enjoy the favors of Allah upon you, enjoy the gifts of Allah upon you. Allah's given you purity, goodness, chastity. Why do you want to choose that which is not supposed to be within the picture? And then you want to, uh, you know, uh, use religion to try and justify what you're doing. My brothers and sisters, it's about time we quit our bad habits. We worked on them. We became better people. Too many people are suffering for nothing. And like I said, this is a topic that's taboo. A lot of scholars don't speak about it openly, but I think it's about, to, it's about time we spoke about it and addressed it live. And like I say, brothers and sisters, please be faithful to your spouses. Yes, it will be a sacrifice. Yes, you will always come across something that might look a little bit better. It might be, but the Almighty has bestowed you with something that is really the best for you. Work on it. Prove at least that you can, you know, you can do the right thing. Prove that you're a responsible person, that you actually worship the Almighty, that you're fearful of the day that you're going to be returning to the Almighty. And you know what? We all do make mistakes, but a mistake has a different levels. Mistakes have different levels. And if you were to make a mistake that's, you know, beyond a threshold of being, what can I say, beyond, beyond the point of return in this case of a spouse, you know, with the Almighty, you can always seek forgiveness. But sometimes your spouse, there is a line beyond which he or she will not be able to go. They might help, they might try. They might... I know of cases of women, they complain that their husbands have not been intimate with them for a week, two weeks, a month, two months, a year, two years. Come on, what is going on? You cannot allow that to happen. And vice versa, vice versa as well. Come on, what do you expect? Why are you still married? Why, why have you remained together? You know, why don't you terminate this thing? Or why don't you do something about it? Come on, what do you expect from that spouse? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Like I say, we're not supposed to be imposing ourselves on anyone, but we're supposed to be having a beautiful relationship. Come on, can't we do something meaningful, my brothers and sisters? Okay, I just noticed a comment now on this Insta Live where someone says he looks like he's on top of a tree. Well, listen, I'm in Africa and I'm in Harare and it is a beautiful place and I'd like you guys to come and visit this place. It's really nice. Zimbabwe has a lot of uh, tourist resorts. It has some really lovely places. It's a very peaceful country. It's really lovely. The people are absolutely amazing and we thank the Almighty for such beautiful weather. It's superb, mashallah, tabarakallah. So if you're planning on a holiday, come to Harare and plan to visit various places. You can check it out online. You know, nowadays with Facebook and all these other things, uh, you can actually Google where to go. You can check where to go. And inshallah, you may want to come. I'm not on the top of a tree. I'm at a restaurant known as the Fusion Palace. And I'm sitting outside where I just brought my family along here for some tea. And uh, subhanAllah, my children are playing. And I thought I'd speak with you guys because so many people have raised this issue. And I'm just getting so inundated with messages and so on. So I'm, I'm seated here actually... Uh, they're going to be serving the tea right here, subhanAllah. That's amazing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all ease. Love you guys. Please take heed what I've said. You make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with all of us. We need to try and return to the Almighty. And we need to make sure that we've actually uh, tried to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where do I stay? I stay in Zimbabwe, in Harare. I was born and raised here. So that's where I stay. Just That's a question that someone's asked me on my screen right now. I've answered it. Barakallah fikum, take care guys, and may Allah bless you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.